Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I hope you can hear me. I am in the dining room tonight. Chris um, is late taking his shower. And I have not been feeling all that great today. Um, I hope y'all have had a blessed day. It is Monday, January the 4th. I may have put 5th on my um, title for today, but it's actually the 4th of January. I mean, February the 4th. Lord have mercy. Um, today, I'm going to read to you our uh, Bible study. Finally, I've been away for a while. I've been having migraines a lot. It's driving me crazy. Had one today again. Um, I'm not feeling very good this evening, and my surgery is tomorrow, so y'all keep me in your prayers. I'm just having a biopsy, so it should be simple. But... Um, I've just not felt good lately, and um, I hope I get feeling better. This, um, today, the lesson is um, for February the 4th, and it talks about God speaking and how he speaks to us. It's a good little lesson. Um, I read it already once. I always try to read it before I come on here with y'all. I hope y'all can hear me. I don't have my speaker on today. Can y'all hear me good? Hey, Elaine, um, let's see, this is coming out of Hebrews, and that's Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, if y'all want to look that up in your Bible, I'm going to flip mine over there real quick, and that's Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. We got some new lighting today while we're flipping over here for our kitchen, I'm excited. Amy came in here a while ago, and Chris said, she said, why does it look like the sun exploded in our kitchen? We got some uh, daylight lighting for the dining room and the two, uh, um, what do you call those, fluorescent bulbs that are in the kitchen. On the, We got, it's supposed to do better for video, so we'll see in a few days, won't we all? Um, anyway, anyway, we are in Hebrew. Uh, chapter 1, and I, this is not my typical Bible, so let me flip through here and find it. Hebrew. Okay, Hebrew chapter 1. Now, this is a, uh, I think this must be Chris's Bible. This is Chris's study Bible. I picked his up, and um, I've been listening to my Bible on the, on the phone because my head's been hurting all the time, and I just turn it on before I go to bed and listen to it, and Sometimes before I take a nap, I'll turn it on and listen to it. It's, a, it's really nice. I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, this says Hebrew chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. We'll read it right quick. It says, um, God's son better than the angels. It says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had made him, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. That's very encouraging to hear, isn't it? being made so much better than the angels as he hath as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they for unto which of the angels said he at any time thou art my son this day have i begotten thee and again i will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son and all of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So he's letting us know how important Jesus Christ is, how God um, sets him, of course, above the angels, says that he is his son and tells us that he's his son. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful passage. Now, um. We're going to read in our Jesus, Our Perfect Hope book, and this is by Charles Stanley. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and read you today and tomorrow, and then if I feel like coming on tomorrow, I will. Um, 
But if I act a little goofy tomorrow, it's because I've been put to sleep. And I promised Mama I'd go by and see her after I got done. So it's not like I plan on coming home and getting in the bed. I never do that after surgery. I was telling somebody um, after I had my double mastectomy, it was not that hard of a surgery for me. But I'm pretty tough and keep going like the Energizer battery, my mama always said. And I remember after I had my double mastectomy, within a couple of days, I was outside. It might have been the day of. I don't remember. But anyway, of course, I felt good because all that medicine was still in me. And I walked down the stairs to the, to the pool, and we have an above-ground pool. And I was going to put some chemicals in the pool, and I got stung by a doggone wasp. On the arm that they took the lymph nodes out of. And uh, anyway, I got in trouble. They were like, why are you outside after you've had surgery? And I'm like, well, I just, you know, it's something that needed to be done. And I was doing it. So um, I don't normally. Now, the only surgery I've ever had that kept me flat and I couldn't do nothing was my trans flat where they bring the muscles from your back to the front and suture them around your chest. Because I had two cuts in the back, and of course, I was cut across the front on both sides. And then that was a rough surgery. And I will say, if you've had breast surgery and know somebody who has had that surgery, that is a tough, tough surgery. Don't even know that I'd do it all over again if I had to do it. I guess I might. Probably. I don't know. And then um, my Achilles tendon surgery on my foot was a real big one because you can't get up or nothing with that. So... It was depressing. I had to sit still. I couldn't even put my foot on the floor for the longest. It was awful. But anyway, enough of that. Thanks. Uh, but y'all keep me in your prayers tomorrow. I'm just having a ball. See, so. Um, this says, February the 4th, God speaks. And it says, God, after he spoke long ago to the fathers and the prophets in many portions and in many ways, in these last days, he has spoken to us in his son. Um, one thing that just... I think about often is this, um, you know, those of those people out there that don't believe that God, that Jesus is the Son of God. I think sometimes I feel sorry for them because they're missing out on so much. Oh my goodness, are they missing out? Because um, you know, years ago, he, he did speak to us through angels, through prophets, through different ways in the Old Testament. And now today, in this day and time, the age of grace, he is speaking to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And through the word of God, of course, just like, you know, they've pinned down the word of God. But um, it makes me feel sorry for those who do not believe that Jesus is the son of God because they are not being able to communicate with God in the same manner that we are. And it's just, um, I just can't imagine, you know, being that one that is uh, not believing and doesn't have the promises and the advantages and the, and the communications that we do through Jesus Christ. Uh, with that said, it says, throughout history, this is from Charles Stanley, throughout history, God has communicated with humanity in the ways we can't, could understand him, he taught Adam and Eve as he walked with them in the cool of the day. He addressed Moses through the burning bush and Joseph through dreams. Elijah heard his whisper while it took a large fish to get through to Jonah. In these last days, we have seen how God communicates through Jesus who use daily life circumstances to teach important lessons. And now his Holy Spirit, praise the Lord for that, right, indwells us to lead us into all truth. John chapter 16, verse 13. Let's go to that and read it right quick. I just love the book of John. I just read through that book. And to me, it's one of the most beautiful books in the Bible. Of course, they're all beautiful, but I just love it. Um, so let's let's look at that. John chapter uh, 16, I believe it said. John, Matthew, Mark, Luke. This guy has been in John uh, in a lot of our lessons over the last few days and in the same chapter. So he got stuck in this chapter for a while and wrote a lot on it. That just shows 
how good John is, right? Um, John 1613, okay? So, it says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me. I'm going to go ahead and read a little bit more because it sounds so good. For he shall receive of mine and will show it unto you. All, the, all things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and I shall show it unto you. Uh, we were talking in Sunday school this Sunday about... Um, it was, we were talking about Psalms 33, but one of the things that the pastor talked about, we have a pastor, his name is um, Stan Pittman, and he's a sweetheart, um, and I don't know, I don't know if I've told y'all or not, I'm not really going to go into why unless y'all really, if somebody is bothered by it, they really want to know why, they can private message me, but we did, we did go back to a different church. <laughs> Uh, we left, and now we're at Tabernacle Baptist in Hiram. And um, if it kind of bothers you or whatever, I'll be happy to tell you why we did it. Uh, but but you'll have to ask me in a private message. Um, but anyway, in uh, our lesson, he was talking about how the schools, um, how they had, you know, gotten away from God and... Um, how they had incorporated things into what they're teaching um, that wasn't like, you know, biblical type things. You know, they're kind of going, you know, he felt like they was kind of going away from it or what, you know. And um, he he's always taught at a private institution. And then um, also in our colleges, and I have to say that some of that is true and that some of it is not. Um in my opinion, it is up to us to teach our children uh, the ways of the Lord, and not just the church, but the parents too. And I really believe that when we are saved and the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of our heart, He is the ultimate guide and the ultimate teacher. So I let Brother Stan know that um, as a child, I can remember after I got saved, before I got saved, I can remember going into the grocery store back then, they sold the grapes by the pounds, you know, and you picked them up and you weighed them. And um, we would always go in there and pick a couple and eat them, you know, prior to me getting saved. And I can remember after I got saved going into the grocery store and my sister reached up and grabbed a grape. And I can remember vividly thinking, I can't get that grape that's stealing. And I remember... As she reached for that grave, before I reached for a grave, I remember thinking God was watching me. Now, I wasn't afraid of Mama and what Mama would think or somebody in the store and what they would think. The Holy Spirit was already residing in my heart, and I knew that God was watching me. It's called the fear of the Lord is the beginning beginning of all wisdom. So I feared the Lord, not somebody else or anybody else. And that's what it takes, y'all. That's what it takes for a Christian to know the difference between right and wrong, to know the difference between good and bad um, or evil, if you want to call it evil. And, and that's the ultimate goal we should have is to get that Holy Spirit put in our heart which means salvation and the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's more important in this world than anything for everybody walking in this world um, is that they would know the difference between uh, good and evil. And that's how you know it. So regardless of where you go to school, regardless of where you go to town, regardless of where you go to college, if you've got that Holy Spirit living inside of you, even if where are you going to church? Whether or not they're teaching the truth. Um, if you got that Holy Spirit living in you, that is your ultimate guide that Jesus Christ himself said plainly. He was giving us 
when he left this earth. What a beautiful gift he gave us, right? This is what I'm talking about when I talk about how those who do not believe that Jesus is the Son of God miss out. They miss out on that Holy Spirit. They miss out on this guidance. They miss out on this joy and this abundant life that we live here. And it is very sad, and we should, our heart should uh, want them to join us in the church, Christ's bride, that will be lifted up out of this world at the end of time. Um, but let's finish this Bible study. I'll just get off on something and start talking, and I get excited. And it's just so exciting to me. And that's another reason why, I'll just go ahead and say this too. And we just had a girl, you know, go, uh, go home to the Lord. And, you know, here I am having this box in if it's cancer and it's back. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a chance that I could go to see God. Uh, does that bother me? Absolutely not. Do I want to die? Not necessarily, but I can guarantee you one thing, I'm ready. And to be with the one who loved me more than anybody, the one that loved this world so much that he would give his only begotten son, to die for us as that ultimate sacrifice, how could anybody not want to go see heaven and see Jesus Christ? I have no idea. And a lot of people go, oh, it's just normal for us not to want to die, and it's just natural. And I'm like, if you are sure in your salvation and you truly believe what you say you believe, then you shouldn't be scared at all. Um, but anyway, let's finish this. I'm not scared at all because I know where I'm going. Uh, it says, friend, that is why you need never be afraid of missing God's will if you're in an intimate relationship with him. The one who created you can overcome any inability you have to hear him. You can trust the Father to speak and even to move heaven and earth to show you his will. So be listening um, it says, Father, thank you for always communicating in the way that I can best hear you. Amen. And we should praise the Lord that we live in this age of grace and that he's given us the comforter in Jesus Christ and that we live through him in these last days. Uh, that's so much better than a prophet having to speak the word of God. And it's so much better for us to hear from God waiting, you know, long periods of time before we can even hear from God. We have the Bible. We can hear from God every day. And um, it is just, we are just so privileged. We're so privileged that we don't even realize how privileged we are because we leave our book closed. Um, but we are so privileged uh, because this is a supernatural person, the the God that we serve, and um, so many of us, you know, dream about Superman or something crazy like that. I remember when I, we were growing up, it was Wonder Woman on TV that we loved so much. Wonder Woman. And here we have this supernatural God and this supernatural Holy Spirit, and it's real, and then we don't even take the time out to let it be a part of our lives. It's just amazing to me. Uh I hope y'all have a blessed evening. Me and Chris haven't even had supper. I had to lay down when I got home. I went by Mama's and I, I, me and Chris moved her up in the bed and we did that yesterday as well. And I believe it wasn't the best thing I could do for the ribs. You know, I have these dislocated ribs since we went to LA and I think that was not very smart because I started hurting so bad I had to come home and lay down. Um, with that said, I think Chris said he was going to eat leftover chili, and that thing's, they, it's been in there probably at least a week or more, but it ain't going to hurt him. Nothing hurts him. So I'll have to figure out what I'm going to eat, maybe an egg sandwich for supper. Um, I hope y'all have a blessed night. Y'all keep me in your prayers in the morning. My surgery's at 945, and, um, and then I'll be back home. I'm going to go by and see Mama first, and then uh, hopefully I'll be able to tune in and talk to y'all tomorrow. Um, so we will see you then. I see there's a lot of people here tonight, and I appreciate it. I love all y'all very much. I appreciate your patience with my Bible study. I wish, so wish, that I could be on here every single day to talk about God. And I feel bad when I don't, but sometimes I just don't feel as good as I should, and then I can't, I don't get on here enough, you know. Um, but let me just say this, over the last few days, too, we've had 
went and bought Amy a car, and that takes time um, going, getting all that straightened out. So all that's finally straightened out. We've gotten paid for the old car. We've taken back the rental car. We've gotten her a car. We've gotten her radio fixed in the car. And uh, so hopefully that's settled for now. Um, Y'all have, like I've already said that a million times, y'all have a good evening. Let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. This February the 4th, we um, praise you for all that you do. We praise you for your Son and our life here and our abundant life through your Son, Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that all of us will put you first in our lives and take the time out for you to speak to us and us to speak to you each and every day. Be with all of my viewers. I hope that you bless them. Uh, put your hand on them and keep them safe and content in this life, Lord, until you can bring them home. Um, be with us tomorrow as we are under the surgeon's hands. And I pray that she gets every little piece of that area out of there so that I don't have to worry about it anymore. I thank you for living in the United States where we have doctors and nurses and, and health care and a lot of us complain and fuss, but we really don't know how good we've got it. And I pray that all of us could look around and feel blessed and content with what you have given us. Um, dear, we just thank you so much and we pray all of this in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Y'all have a good night. We will see you hopefully tomorrow. Maybe I'll enjoy my egg sandwich. Um, Mary, I'm just having a box. See, it's not something big. Uh, it's just an area they're taking out. The same area this summer y'all prayed about that I felt like was it looked so cancerous. And it did on the ultrasound. It looked just like my last did. And then it needled it. And they said it was fine. But it's not going away. And it's real tubular feeling. And kind of puffing up, and I just want it out so I don't have to worry about it anymore, and it's gone, and I don't have to feel it anymore, and it'll be done. I noticed this morning on that video I did on YouTube, y'all, um, my arm is so fat. This is my lymphedema arm, and you can kind of see the difference it, in, the, in the picture, how fat it is. And I'm right-handed. I know on there it looks makes it look like I'm left-handed, but you remember this is reversed because it's a it's like a selfie camera. But this thing is so fat, and I just hate it. And uh, I gotta lose a little bit of weight, yeah, because my arm gets bigger as I get bigger, and it drives me nuts. But anyway, uh, Mary, I'm doing good, and I know um, you are a blessing to me so much, Mary. The way you keep going and keep trucking and you are just a real blessing. You should write a book or something. Love y'all. Bye.